guys, Battlefield 2042 just dropped a major bombshell of news regarding the state of Battlefield 2042. So we're gonna go over all of the major changes coming in the update two and update three of Battlefield 2042. It starts off with the teams across the globe are working 24 seven to evolve and deliver improvements to the game. Since launch, we've made a number of service updates that have improved server performance, as well as the vaulting and restoration of content not performing in line with our designs. They went on to state that we also wanna give you assurance that we're carefully evaluating your desire to see legacy features return end of match scoreboard server browser and features like voice chat are big topics for us to cover all at once and they will come back to us with an update in the future the blog goes on to say that now let's focus on what is coming we'll be delivering update number two for the game on thursday november 25th followed by a further substantial update number three in early december we're also working on another update that we will be looking to deploy in advance to the holidays as well in addition to the updates that are coming we'll also be sharing more details about season one in early 2022 moving on there are two issues we're tracking in relative to performance server side and hardware related issues on the client side for servers we're largely seeing our services perform at our intended target levels following numerous back-end changes since launch stability of the game has continued to be strong from launch however there are still some critical issues that you may experience when playing on servers that we are keen to resolve quickly we're also seeing on rare occasions that you're unable to spawn on the server with your intended loadout we believe we've discovered that issue and it will be fixed in update number two on the 25th as for hardware on console we have tracked and worked with my Microsoft to ensure that a critical system update was rolled out to prevent instances of the system performing a power cycle during gameplay. This update went live with Xbox Series X and S last Thursday, and it became a mandatory system update this week. Moving on for all of you playing on PC, we want to acknowledge that many of you are finding that performance of the game is presently CPU bound and not enough of you who are fortunate enough to enjoy high CPU and GPUs are seeing the benefit of consistent high frame rates. Identifying engine level optimizations and developing solutions will require a lengthier response time from us to get that right short term we'll be doing all we can to offer performance improvements that reduce the load and most importantly up your frame rates when possible now moving on to the gunplay and balance shortly after launch many of you who play on pc help to identify an odd inconsistency with behavior of aiming relative to your mouse sensitivity settings we have done a great deal of investigation around this and we have been able to validate that some of the settings are not properly applying we have developed a fix for this and we're targeting for the third upcoming update for this on console we've been performing similar investigations around the consistent consistency of aim assist we're aware of the issues that you've helped to raise at this point and wanted to volunteer that this is not consistently behaving in line with our designs we're on it and we will keep you updated they went on to talk about weapon bloom for the assault rifles they said we have observed that on many weapons predominantly the assault rifles like the ak-24 the spread tends to be too high especially when moving while zoomed which causes problematic engagements in the average combat distance of our maps weapons miss more than they often really should which makes it for an unsatisfying experience and could feel unfair when you've done all you could to nicely align your shots they stated that they've made a series of adjustments in the update two in the second update which launches on thursday they reduced the spread globally when zoomed in and moving improved stationary zoomed accuracy for many weapons spread now decreases faster and earlier when pacing shots this means more success with single fire and short bursts they nerfed the pp29 they said increase pp29 vertical recoil to ensure the weapon does not overperform when engaging outside of its intended combat range and then for update three they fixed an issue where spread would be too high when trying to fire while zoomed in after sprinting for some portal weapons and they reduced the effectiveness of ntw 50 against vehicles moving on to vehicles since the game went live we saw the hovercraft become a fan favorite given its high durability and effectiveness in combat we designed this vehicle to behave as an alternative to the latv4 but not as an upgrade in thursday's update number two we have balanced the health of this vehicle to bring it more in line with its design and made sure that its weaponry is appropriately effective they've also adjusted the nightbirds 20 millimeter cannons which were generating excessive splash damage this is also being adjusted for update number two moving on to a big one we have the solo and co-op and custom portal experience progression they stated that we designed battlefield 2042 to enable players to progress uniformly across the experience shortly after the release of the game we observed a significant imbalance in the earn rates for the experience xp particularly in battlefield portal where players created servers designed specifically to farm xp unfortunately the limiters we had in place were not working as intended and in order to maintain a balance across the game we temporarily disabled progression across solo co-op and in custom portal experiences they went on to state that this past weekend they were able to reintroduce those caps and develop the smarter xp and progression caps that have allowed us to re-enable xp earned via the custom portal experiences we will continue to monitor xp farm servers and take appropriate actions to remove them from the pool when needed moving on to everything happening in update number two they said they improved soldier revives as we talked about in a previous video next up they fixed the issue where players were stuck in an infinite down state they actually added different measures to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore they re-enabled 
the UAV one interaction in Battlefield Portal, the Hovercraft and Nightbird nerfed as mentioned before. The weapon bloom has been reduced for all weapons except for shotguns, which results in a more consistent bullet spread during gameplay. And then they stated that there will be a handful more critical changes that we're making alongside the update, which they'll be detailing in their full update notes on November 24th. Moving on to update number three, which is going to be arriving in early December, which will be Battlefield 2042's biggest update since launch. They stated that it will have significantly more fixes, changes, and most importantly, quality of life improvements due to arrive in the game. And they officially gave us a snapshot of what we should expect in update number three. For the user interface, they improved the collection screens, making them easier to use. They've also improved the ways in which you're able to manage your attachments via the collection screen to reduce the number of interactions you need to do when building your loadout. They've made enhancements to the player card screen and end of round screen to provide additional polish. They've added new markers to make your newly unlocked items easier to find. They've improved screen transitions when entering and returning to the main menu, improved report of player flow specifically around toxicity and cheating reports. As for matchmaking and friends, they improved the experience between end of round and the main menu, improved matchmaking reliability and reduced instances of matchmaking failed. They fixed the crossplay invite flows, fixed rich presence update issues, ensuring that your friends are better able to track where you are in the game. They've addressed servers getting stuck in an unresponsive game states. They made fixes to friend invitations for players on PC. Next up, we've got progression and unlocks. They've added weekly missions providing set challenges that reward cosmetic unlocks, added a first match bonus of 1000 hazard zone credits for hazard zone, fixed an issue that was not properly awarding XP for angel resupplies, improved overall XP slash rank tracking and reliability, improved mastery rank tracking, improved reliability of player card tracking. They've made various updates to the renderer. They've made improvements to artifacts affecting DLSS implementation. They've made improvements to water rendering when aiming down sites. Now as for the maps, over 150 individual fixes, small changes and improvements across all of our maps. They've improved the level geometry issues across all levels, addressing issues such as players getting snagged or trapped, resolved multiple spawning issues, some visual glitches such as lens flares and visible seams in Sky Dome, resolved a large number of collision and placement issues, addressed the issues affecting local audio placement in multiple maps. As for Battlefield Portal, they added a bunch of new builder additions, an official team deathmatch and FFA gunmaster templates, new official infection template, rules editor updates, an official vehicle team deathmatch template, rush game mode layouts for all 2042 all-out warfare maps through Portal. They did various improvements to Battlefield Hazard Zone. For Conquest, they tuned information spamming in Conquest. For Breakthrough, they tuned the capture times, improved out-of-bounds defender spawning in Breakthrough to ensure that you're able to more consistently spawn in safety. They made UI improvements to better track your round progression. Now, as for other general changes, they fixed for missing loadouts. They modified recent player screen. Now, as for vehicles, they fixed the issue where missile countermeasures sometimes didn't work, made exit position from vehicles more consistent. They fixed the controller vibration for vehicles. They added an option for vehicle boost as toggle or hold. They balanced the Nightbird minigun spread buildup and convergence. They removed the blast impulse on attack helicopters and anti-vehicle rocket, which caused nudging of vehicles on hit. Now for other fixes to weapons, they fixed the 8x scope having a much faster ADS than others. They reduced the switchback weapon delay after throwing a grenade. They provided various other updates for the weapons that we've already went over. They did a bunch of quality of life improvements for the HUD. They fixed some issues with the bots not being able to revive players. They made some updates to the bots. They improved a bunch of audio issues. Now for the specialists for Sundance, they fixed the grenade belt. For Angel, they fixed some issues with the loadout crate. I wish they updated some stuff with the DCS deployable cover. They fixed some issues and made some improvements to Dozer's ballistic shield. They gave a slight nerf for the cyber warfare suit, made slight adjustments to the MGX scanner. The OVP recon drone got some updates. Boris's sentry gun also got an update that fixed an issue where the sentry gun would not be able to acquire targets that are near a vehicle. Sundance got an update that fixed a couple bugs. Fox S21 pistol also got some updates. For instance, added healing VFX when you're being healed. And they added a sound feedback for when you're being healed by the S21 pistol. And of course, McKay's grappling hook also got some updates. For instance, fixed an issue where grappling hook rope got misaligned in front of the gadget after changing FOV settings. There is so many other updates coming in the update three for Battlefield 2042, as well as the update two. And I cannot wait to play all of these new changes. Whether or not these next two updates are actually gonna improve the game, I am not sure. I would imagine how many updates they actually went through that this is gonna be pretty substantial changes coming to Battlefield 2042. And for that reason, I cannot be more excited. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up with today's Battlefield 2042 news video. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe to my channel with your notifications turned on, and don't forget to check back tomorrow for another Battlefield 2042 news video.